If you're old enough to remember when you could buy wheel cylinder cups separately in an assortment like I have here, then you're really old. Anymore, you can't buy wheel cylinder cups or kits. You have to buy the whole wheel cylinder. Here are a few tools that will make it a little bit easier. You can improvise. You don't have to have these. You can do without. When I make a video, I try to make it so simple that even a beginner can understand what we're trying to do here. So experts, bear with me please. I had forgotten to bring my camera to work when I started on this brake job. So the brake job's already done, but uh, I haven't put the wheels and drums back on yet, so I'll give you an idea of what I've done. You'll have to have a really strong impact to remove this rear axle nut. It's 1 in 13 sixteenths. I don't know the metric size. And you can use a breaker bar and a pipe to get the leverage you need to break this loose, but I had a real strong impact. You'll need a 6 millimeter Allen wrench to remove that front spindle nut. And this, of course, is the 1 in 13 sixteenths socket with 3 quarter inch drive to remove the axle nut. Remove, clean, and inspect your wheel bearings to make sure there's no defects, no pits, no bluing from heat. Keep your left and right side separate so you'll know which drum it goes in and use a high temperature, high quality disc brake wheel bearing grease so that your grease won't thin out and run out all over your brakes. My son had a new double axle trailer and the grease was leaking everywhere and that was the problem. It was just cheap grease. We repacked them with high quality, high temperature grease, no problem. If your front wheel grease seals are in good shape, you may be able to remove them without damage. But then again, maybe not. There's a seal removal tool shown at the start of this video. When you have your bearings clean, repack them by hand, pushing grease into every little crevice of these bearings. This shows the E-clip that retains the speedometer cable through the dust cap on the left front wheel. Some may use a cotter pin, some may use a hairpin clip. As a rule, usually your front brakes will be wider and have a bigger shoe than the rear brakes. Now the rear shoes on this has a hole where the arrow is for the emergency brake lever. Now the reason we're doing the brake job on this 69 VW bus is that you could not lock it down. It would not slide the wheels. And uh, I'm 73. I've done brakes my entire life since I was 15. And I won't use anything but Bendix and Raybestos when I can get it. So it's difficult to tell the quality of lining you have. So I'm replacing all lining with Raybestos. The right rear brake wasn't working at all, and the left one was soaked with. Uh, uh, brake fluid from a leaking wheel cylinder. All the wheel cylinders were leaking. All were pitted too bad to do anything with, even if you could get kits, which you can't. So we replaced all the wheel cylinders with new ones. This photo shows the left front brake. And you can see by the little red arrows the line that connects the two wheel cylinders. And that can be very difficult to remove, and it's even hard to get to with a tubing wrench. So you have to be really careful here and not round them off. Notice that the brake springs go behind the shoes in this photo. The wheel cylinders on the left front are a different part number than those on the right. When you remove the four bolts that holds the wheel cylinders, this entire backing plate, as it is called, will come off the spindle. Now, to be sure that you have the backing plate on the right side, because somebody may have put them on there wrong, you'll find this uh, grease retaining ring shown where the blue arrow is. At the bottom of that ring, there is a little vent hole that allows the grease to drain out. Make sure that little grease drain hole is at the bottom. If it is, then it's correct. The yellow arrow shows a brake inspection hole. 
I loosened the front brake line, the flex line. I loosened it from the top wheel cylinder shown here. And then I removed the wheel cylinders and just spun them off that flex line. That way I didn't have to uh, loosen the other end of the flex line if you follow what I'm saying. These front and rear shoes on this right here, and by what I mean front and rear, I mean on the front, the front shoe and then the rear shoe on the front. Uh, they're identical in size, but a lot of times you'll find, especially on American cars, you'll have a larger shoe lining at the rear and a smaller on the front. Not so in this case. I think you'll find it easier to remove these wheel cylinders with the connecting line still attached. Take it and put it on your bench and then you can uh, put it in your vise and, and disconnect that line. It's hard to get to. These drums were in good shape. They weren't scored or ridged. Uh, and you see here I've removed the bearings. Clean your hole in your hub out where the bearings go. Clean it out real good. On some vehicles, you can knock these bearings out from the front using a wooden wooden stick or a hammer handle or something like that, and that won't damage the bearings and usually won't damage the seal. But not so in this case. It needed new seals anyway. If your seals are good and you want to save them, on this bus, you'll have to take a putty knife or a thin screwdriver and slip it under the edge of the seal and carefully work it out. If you're lucky, you won't damage the seal or the little T90 spring that goes inside that seal. I chose to clean and break the glaze on this drum by sanding it lightly with uh, like 120 paper. On this 69 bus, the front flex hose screws directly into the wheel cylinder. There are no copper sealing washers. Remove and clean your brake adjusters here shown by the blue arrows. Clean them good and lubricate them with high temperature wheel bearing grease. Be sure when you replace your equalizer bar that the bar fits into the slots properly as shown here in the shoes. Be sure that the shoes fit into the slot on the wheel cylinder pistons as shown by the yellow arrows. They fit in a slot. If you have to pull that dust cover back to be sure, do that. If it's in the slot correctly, when you pull on the top of that shoe, pull outward, it won't move. It'll stay in the slot. Be sure that these spring clips are in the proper position as shown here. You don't need a special tool like shown in this video. You can use a pair of pliers. That'll work just as well. Your horseshoe clip as shown by the red arrow may be reusable. If not, be sure and replace it with the horseshoe clip, not an E-clip, not a hairpin clip but a clip just like you see here. It's the only one that will stand the pressure. And this is the part number from AutoZone for the rear wheel cylinders. They're both identical. The red arrow shows the brake adjusting hole through this drum. Now this drum was on really tight and I had to use uh, a slide puller I had for a standard American car. I hooked it to just two, two holes here and it worked just fine. It popped it right off. You can see here that the right rear brake wasn't working at all. You can see the, how rusty the drum is and where I sanded it clean in one part. Well, at first I thought the reason for that was the wheel cylinder pistons on the right rear were frozen, corroded, solid. But I later found out that fluid would not pass through that side, would not come out the bleeder screw, and so from experience uh, I knew that it was going to be that flex hose on the right side near the transaxle. Now in my 65 years of working on cars, and I'm factory trained on GM and Ford, I've run into this flex hose problem several times. A flex hose can come apart on the inside and can act like a check valve, keeping uh, fluid from going through it. But also it can work the other way and keep fluid in the wheel cylinder keeping the brake on. This nut on the end of this brake line was frozen solid and I didn't try to heat it or anything. I just used penetrating oil on it but it would not come loose so let me tell you what I did. A little trick here, of course you may want to replace the line. If you don't notice a frozen nut on the line like this, you'll twist that line in two before you realize it. What I did was just break the line loose, 
then take the uh, wheel cylinder completely loose from the backing plate and then spin the wheel cylinder off the line so that works and put it back the same way. There's a clip at each end of that flexible brake lining and they're both the same. You can use a pair of pliers to pull it off or tap it off with a screwdriver and a hammer. And as I said, this flex line was clogged solid. Hold that flex line with, I believe it was a 17 millimeter, hold that flex line and use 11 millimeter on the line itself, being careful not to twist the line if it's frozen. I kept this line so I wouldn't lose my fluid when I went after a new line. This emergency brake equalizer bar is shown here by the red arrow goes a certain way as shown here and the little clip holds the spring that goes to the shoes. Be sure that you have that right and that it fits in the right slot. And of course here's the new flex hose and clips installed. And don't forget to check your master cylinder actuator rod to make sure it's adjusted properly. Take out all free travel. Loosen the lock nut and push the boot back and hold the rod with a pair of vice grips and you can adjust that rod to take all free travel out. You don't want to have that uh, master cylinder piston pushed in at all so adjust it carefully. You have to take the bleeder screw out on this to get to that uh, line nut. It's that close. And this photo just shows how your brake shoes should look in the adjuster and how the uh, return springs go. With the wheel and tire on this vehicle, you can see the adjustment hole through the drum for the star wheel. And I see I've got another job coming up. Going to have to replace some boots on these axles.